Welcome to another exciting episode of Post Shave in what has proven to be a very busy week. Jet lag, the United States, exciting new products. Wow, 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 wow. Remember, hashtag SOTD, hashtag post shave. Let's get on with the questions. What's the difference between a cold shave versus a hot shave? And what are the advantages and disadvantages? Uh, there has been a lot of excitement and buzz um, surrounding the cold shave uh, camp. Um, a lot of people feel that cold shaves are very good uh, in terms of uh, eliminating or eradicating or minimizing or mitigating irritation. What happens with warmer temperature water is that the surface capillaries dilate. As they dilate, we have all these little nerve endings that become excited. And when you start to lather your face and then bring a blade to your face, you may feel some irritation. One way of combating this, of course, is to use um, a variety of products like uh, fragrance-free soaps. But a very cheap, inexpensive and very quick way is to use cold water. This is one way of uh, really toughening up, of manning up, using cold water. Warm water, okay, the advantages are quite clear. Um, it uh, opens the pores. Once you open the pores, you allow the dirt and the grime to be brought to the surface and be washed away. Uh, a lot of men and women feel that using hot water just works better with lather. I've got to say though that hot water, or introducing warm to hot water, sometimes actually does a disservice to your lather. Lather dissipates. So, it's up to you. You've got to weigh it up. I'm a fan of cold water shaving in the warmer months, of course, but there are advantages and disadvantages to both. Can anyone explain what two band, three band and black fiber are? I might be one year into this hobby, but I still have much to learn. We all have lots to learn. And at the risk of going into a whole spiel and making it sound like a National Geographic channel, um, there are differences with the animal. Firstly, there are two types of badger, believe it or not, where we call, I mean, there are many types of badger, but the two primary um, uh, species of badger are the Eurasian badger, Meles Meles, which uh, uh, give us the three band um, brushes that we're so fond of. And then there is the lovable hog badger, Arctonyx calaris. Is it more than just a species? It absolutely is. It has to do with the coloration of the brush. It usually starts off, a three band will usually start off light, then you have a darker band, then a softer, lighter band. Uh, this is generally used in silver tip brushes, which are a little bit more expensive, of course, because the hairs have to painstakingly be selected by hand. Okay, so generally the three band are softer, Nice for face lathering, but bowl lathering uh, uh, as well. Not as scritchy or scratchy as a two band. And generally, you need more fibers in a three band to provide backbone than you would in a two band. I know many people that really enjoy a good two band brush, particularly those that like to face lather and really get in there and feel the scritch and scratch. I'm one of them but I enjoy my three bands as well. Um, it's a personal preference. If you see a synthetic brush with bands, they're fake. They're just colored in, dyed in. That's it. They want to make it look real, but it ain't real. Black fiber. Now I'm assuming you're referring to the synthetic fiber, which is not an animal at all. Um, Muller has done a wonderful job at producing a proprietary uh, fiber, which is wonderful. Feels nice on the skin, absorbs uh, just the right amount of water, gives up the lather beautifully. Um, but of course, there's also black badger, which comes from the nasty part of the, of the badger. If you're referring to black badger, well, that uh, has a lot of scritch, but I'm assuming that you mean the black synthetic. Well, in this episode's product feature and spotlight, I've got to say that Reef Point Soaps Earl Grey and Ginger is an absolute winner. Oh, gee, I love this stuff. Oh, look, 
This is amazing, amazing soap. It performs very well, but the scent on this, I know you might be thinking it's kind of granny and oh, oh, gray and ginger in my tea. No, 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 no. I don't know why this works so well, but Eric has done a magnificent job. Um, it's more than just Earl Grey and more than just ginger. There's kind of a, a sort of a simpatico thing going on here. It's very complex. It, you're obviously going to get that sort of uh, citrusy burst from the bergamot, but also the ginger then does something. It kind of moves in and says, hey, hey, hey. If you haven't tried Reef Point soaps, and in particular, if you haven't tried Reef Point Earl Grey and ginger, why not do it? Really, really nice stuff. No, I like it. I love it. I love it, in fact. Well, this week's shave of the day comes from our G Plus community. And I thought that Rodrigo Zedan has done an absolutely fantastic job uh, with this lovely offering. I like his stuff because it reminds me there was a there's a series of books out at the moment called The History of World War II in 100 Images or The History of the United States in 100 Images or The History of the World in 100 Images. This image looks like it should belong in that book. But more than that, it kind of has this sort of forensic look about it, like we're being presented with these objects in, in a very clear and concise way. Not clinical, but there's something kind of endearing about uh, Rodrigo's um, uh, images. I really, really like this stuff. Well, that's it. We've come to the end of another post-shave episode. Remember, jump on Facebook, G+, Twitter, Instagram. Follow us. We're on VoiceBite as well, which is a wonderful little app where we, you know, put out all sorts of uh, interesting little tidbits. If you're not on that, check it out. I'll put the link below. Um, and we will see you in the next post-shave episode. Thanks for watching.